Anybody would like to ask a question directly, directly uh, to further? Victor? Uh, for real, I should introduce myself, I feel. Um, I'm, uh, um, I'm not the world's expert on Vancouver art, of course, but uh, I curated a show of uh, Vancouver art from Vancouver. Into title. What's that? I, 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 read read yeah, I read your name. Yeah. 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 In fact, I've got a bad feeling Lava sneaked in there. So I'm just going to spout two remarks that, uh, Go for it. that may help you know, flesh out the argument a little more. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing is that it's interesting that you bring up the, uh, the legacy of music and the idea of the video clip and all that. And it's quite interesting to know, of course, that all these, you know, these Vancouver school guys had a band to get rid of some of you know, with Ian Wallace, like, in their class jamming and, and, and Jeff and all that. And so, you know, music has always been quite important to, uh, to, to the scene also in terms of uh, it defining itself as, like, you know, urban versus hippie, all that. But then, um, secondly, and this obviously relates to Althea's work in a big way, um, I mean, you, I, I like the idea of the narrative and narration and, you know, the way that the city has produced an image of itself also in the international art world. Um, and I'm glad that you brought up the, the, for, the, the, the felicitous sound of, of uh, sounding of um, the idea of the master narrative, because one of the problems that I find with um, a lot of that, uh, of, of that art world in a way is its obsession with mastery. And the Thank obsession you. with mastery obviously has Mastery. mastery, obsession with mastery, and with you know like the ma magisterial gesture, and like those notions are obviously infused also with you know very strong gender notions of you know masculinity and, and, and like you know very you know male subjectivity, and and that is I think like you know, that's one of the important things in a way uh, in which um, Althea's work produ produces departure from that you know. Because so much of that work, and especially Ronnie, it's kind of, it's interesting to look at Ronnie Graham's work. I don't think I've ever seen a woman in there, you know. And um, that's m mostly because he photographs himself. So that makes sense. <laughs> but uh, and 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 there's uh, even though, and the interesting thing is that the, this history was very strongly informed by um, by feminism, feminist theory. Like you know, all like Ian Wallace, Jeff Wall were very avid readers of. of Classics of feminist theory from the 60s and 70s, but still there are you know quite like there are strong problems of, of you know ma like the idea of of masculine mastery in there and 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 a weird resistance towards depictions of female self empowerment and I think that was one of the interesting things about <coughs> Althea's work uh, which I came across on one of those scouting trips for the exhibition and her works stood out in such a big way that I decided to show it in another exhibition altogether. Um, so, um, and I think, um, Althea, it's, that's also a question, I mean, this is a remark, and now maybe a question um, directed towards Althea. Um, I just saw the uh, black and white film just now, and that has all men, and, I'm, uh, and, and, and the northern film has like a mixed kind of cast, and um, any, any, anything on your side to comment on that, like the decision to work, you know, the four uh, teenage girls in, 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 the, in, in what looks like a Hollywood movie and everything? Like, you know, are there any, what's the gender politics there? Um, I have, uh, shall I, shall I suggest that you join the table of the uh, and Victoria, sure. so that probably there will be more questions. Uh, <laughs> In terms of your question with regards to the other projects, like for instance, the City of Beans project I made in November and with the young men, um, the easiest answer would be that it was, um, it was a collaborative project that was conceived um, more or less from the beginning in terms of what their um, ideas were about what they were capable of doing. And it was also conceived within a very particular group, which was um, what would be called like conscientious objectors to military service, to be in, in Germany. Um, and so it was an all-male group to begin with. And, um, and none of them had any kind of um, performing ambitions before the project, actually. Well, maybe a couple of them had tried a few things, but um, the, um, the criteria was less determined by, um, uh, in, in 
terms of who was involved with the project was less determined by uh, um, uh, an interest in um, presenting themselves as such and more determined by the group of people that they were already, or the, the, the social situation that they were already implicated within. Um, and then as it unfolded, um, their, uh, what, what, uh, what they and I together felt they were able to do compellingly turned into that project. So, um, and then with the, um, with the film Northern, which is the one that's upstairs, the tree planting project, uh, uh, began with, um, in, not an entirely fixed, but I had a sort of, I had a structural idea already before, before we shot about how, um, how that work ought to um, unfold. And then the roles that the participants played within that um, were less collaborative. They were collaborative to an extent, but I'd sort of given them these sort of situations to, to find their own way within. So, um, um, A Memory Lasts Forever, which is the piece that you're maybe talking about is looking like a Hollywood film or something like that, um, or a musical. Um, again, they were different. Um, uh, there was a different criteria to begin with, and that was that it would be a musical. Uh, we first thought it would be an opera, um, and all of the women who were in that project uh, had some performing experience in musical theater. So that was kind of their background, or that was what they had some training in. Um, and in terms of the gender politics, I I don't know if I really want to comment so specifically on that, <laughs> but. Uh, um, uh, but I can say that I found it interesting that the way that I was guided by the people I worked with was very different in those two projects. I must admit, um, that the same thing occurred to me when what Dieter was saying that um, I kind of had this notion of a self that was kind of like a, was adolescent, um, was um, what you call a feminine, or was female, whatever, was a woman, um, then sort of moves to this like small group who are to some extent identified with you because it's your past. And then, this, like Northern, suddenly they seem a bit older, and men have arrived into it as well. And then when I saw this one today, I was like, ah, the last stage, here it is. Mind of development away from this isolated self, slowly into, and then it's actually able to go so far into society. I mean, this is complete speculation, but it does, this little line seems to form itself, all right? And I must admit, when I saw the piece for the first time today, the first thing I thought was, ah, the men are here. But this is, it's, it's, it's reached that stage, but, but there's any significance to it or what? I mean, I mean, certainly um, in working with, um, and it's something that I really actually myself, I hadn't considered, I mean, of course I've been thinking um, about what it meant to work with gender specific groups because I've been working with young women and I've been, so my work has obviously been identified in that way. And then considering like what it meant to work with this group of young men and how the project was sort of developing very differently um, as a result of their dynamics. Um, and also, I'm certainly as a result of my perception of their dynamics and how I decided to guide that. Um, uh, um, a dear friend of mine, Carrie Tribe, who's also an artist and who's worked with me closely on many of my projects as I have with hers, um, said to me partway through the Civilians Project, you know, I think it's so interesting the way that um, when you're working with, she worked with me on A Memory Last Forever and the Civilians Project um, and a number of other projects as well, as I said, um, uh, the way that when you're only working with a single gender um, uh, group of young people, there's a certain level of kind of trust in themselves and kind of camaraderie that develops that she doesn't think actually would develop in a mixed gender group. And I haven't thought of it so much as such, but definitely there is a kind of like, um, there, there is a kind of relationship that develops with the people who I'm working with over the course of a long-term project and a certain kind of like um, shedding of inhibitions amongst themselves that happens throughout the course of that development. So, I don't know, that, that was her observation. That's not really answering the question. <laughs> I mean, the thing is also that the, the first flash of the, of the movie here, and you may pardon me for this, but also like the first thing I thought of was West Side Story. Um, and it's like the start, like, you know, the beginning of the musical. And, you know, and that, like, the testosterone-fueled territorial kind of behavior that fuels that movie. Uh, which, you know, it's a great movie, so... Um, um, you know. 
I mean, and also like, yeah, and, and Victoria, you uh, brought up uh, Emily Carr, and I was glad to see that happen, of course, because you know, like, here's a patron saying of West Coast Art, and, and, and who, who served as an example for the Vancouver School, and who obviously also operated from this, you know, marginal position of, of, uh, of, of uh, like, a Victorian uh, a woman painter, so, I mean, Is it uh, true that uh, in your three stories and in his command uh, there's, uh, as, as I might presume, a uh, topic about uh, adolescence uh, in your adult years? So if you're adult, then you revive your adolescence. I mean, this is almost like puberty, but you, is it, is it true or am I suggesting wrong things? <laughs> Discovery of boundaries, or how you uh, persuade uh, the boundaries of yeah, uh, yeah, renewing your uh, environment and everything around it. How can you uh, subscribe that? Um, that? That's a hard question to answer, but I think that there's some uh, that it's a good question. Um, but I think of myself in a perpetual stage of that, of um, the sort of perpetual stage of kind of uncertainty and trying to figure out boundaries and uh, um, and uh, and perhaps um, perhaps working with people who are quite certainly you know um, experiencing that in their lives is, is also I find a reflection of an artistic process, a, a particular kind of like vulnerability in artistic process or something like that. I, I have a very simple question, but uh, the visual language seems to be very important in your work and sort of playing with uh, medium or MTV images, but why did you choose upstairs for the work to only have a sound piece to not use imagery for that work. Uh, I fussed about that for a really long time. Um, originally it was a performance, the project itself was a performance, and um, uh, in considering it visually, um, as a performative work, um, it, it um, I, th I think a lot of my work in, in, in different ways has a, offers, offers a kind of um, primacy to certain visual viewing positions and a certain kind of power to the viewer, which I think in some ways becomes undone over the course of viewing, perhaps, for some viewers. Um, and being an audience member during that performance, I think, had a particular, um, in that case, uh, heightened both visual as a, as a static viewer and then um, because of the, the, the ways that the kinds of politics played out over the course of that performance, emotional and kind of like ideological shifting going on during the performance. And that was um, really absent in the video documentation. It kind of, it was quite leveling and, um, and so it, I wasn't sure if, it, if, if the documentation of that project should be shown at all, actually. And then actually it was, a, it was the case that Sabina had done a studio visit with me in Berlin, and, um, and we listened, we were talking about the project, and I couldn't get the video to work, only the audio, and we listened to it um, as an audio recording, and there was something kind of essential that came across just, as, just in the audio. And so that was when the decision was made um, that in fact the documentation could be shown just as an audio um, recording. to the choir of just lined up across the stage as a, as a photograph, it's really strong, actually. Mm -hmm. um, the one that's actually, we showed the piano, it's quite more of it. Yeah, the, or the architecture of that space, too, was kind of a consideration in the way that they, the way that they existed within, it was um, a school auditorium and a military housing complex in San Diego.
Um, I have a kind of funny question. I, one of the things I love about the work is the visual detail and um, a color, especially in Northern, um, just the way you get the texture. And <laughs> I'm wondering, um, I know that you switch, right, from film to video. And I'm wondering whether color has been an issue and whether color in general is an issue at all for you. Like, is it a little bit of a strange question, but... Um, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, are, are you, in Northern, are you talking about the, um, the way that the color is, is rendered in yeah. generally? Yeah, because there's... the choice of color, or what, in what way? Um, I know that you made decisions in terms of media about that particular work. Uh -huh. Like, why do you, 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 you film, what kind of film do you use, in fact? Well, that one, the, the, the format is 35 millimeter, and, um, and as, as you mentioned, it was shot in a single take, so it was all shot on one roll of film, and, um, structurally, um, the film was considered, in terms of its duration, as, um, <coughs> as that kind of being a starting point. It was filmed on a 1,000 foot roll, 35 millimeter film, which is um, 10 minutes, more or less. And, um, and so we knew that the duration of the film had to be 10 minutes or less, because I wanted it to be shot on a single roll of film. And, um, and I knew I wanted to shoot it up 35 millimeter, even though it was like, it, seeming, it seemed to be impossible for my budget at the time, but ended up making it happen, um, because the, um, the very particular visual details of that work, um, I knew would be uh, very important. And so I wanted it to be as, as rendered in, in an as detailed way as possible. Um, uh, and then uh, in terms of the film stock, um, I chose a desaturated film stock um, that wasn't, that didn't have the sort of, um, uh, I, I didn't want it to be, um, uh, an, an overly sort of saturated or vivid color um, in that work, um, and then of course when you when you when you work with film and then you transfer to video, especially especially with thirty five millimeter, and it was transferred to high definition video, and you work in like a um, a studio um, in which you work with a colorist who is the person who's basically responsible for making all of the, the digital decisions about how that film is then transferred to video, which is a very different media. And in working with a colorist, um, um, I told him that I wanted to um, make the blues normal, which is the sky, but to make the rest of the film, it's sort of um, less saturated um, uh, overall um, vividness. So I don't know. Slightly washed out. Yeah. 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 The video downstairs, so stress, like this. I'm curious. You understood what I said? What I, yes, so it's okay. stress. It's, uh, I'm curious about um, what, what do you tell these women if, before you date them? How do you explain your project? What do you tell them what you're planning to make? And, um, what do you ask, what do you talk about, do you discuss about what they wear, or which details do you give them, and what, yeah, what is the collaboration between you and, the, and these women? Um, in that case, we discuss pretty much everything. Um, the, the, the way that I presented the project to them and anyone else who was interested in participating was that it was going to be an art film um, shown in art galleries to an art audiences. And um, uh, and the I'm often asked like why I chose to work with the women that I did who were in that film, and the the answer that I give is that um, uh, that I found them all to be very compelling, and that I enjoyed what they were doing. Um, in I, I I I found something about their songs to be. Um, uh, particular to their lives in a way, um, like one of the girls, which which is something that I think you get over. Perhaps it, it doesn't sort of come right away, but one of the girls, for instance, is singing about um, her abusive family, which you might not get from like the first uh, 
uh, the first listen, but it, um, or you might not get it all actually because of the way that she decides to describe it. Um, and some of the others are singing about other kinds of, you know, first love or lost love, or those kinds of things that tend to be very, you know, profound when you're 18. Um, or not, or later on in life. <laughs> uh, but um, the, in terms of the decisions about the, the locations and their wardrobe and that kind of thing, I more or less left the wardrobe up to them. I asked them to, to wear something that they liked. Um, um, to dress as if it was a summer day, um, and the locations, um, I, it was my decision to film them all in natural locations around Victoria, around the city that it was made, and um, in some cases um, the, the women chose their own location, and in some cases I chose one for them because they didn't know where they wanted to be filmed. if you uh, have been reading the text that you heard uh, today before, but I was wondering how you relate to um, both speakers have been trying to uh, place you in a tradition or disconnect you from a tradition, but that was what both did in different ways, and I just wonder how you as an artist relate to that. <laughs> um, well, I was saying to both speakers beforehand that um, it's it's interesting to me the way that um, the way that my work is, um, is since, since I've been here in the Netherlands the way that my work has been very particularly situated in a tradition of the Vancouver School, which is something that really doesn't happen to me in Vancouver. I'm not really considered to be part of that, <laughs> that history or that um, in, in in a way that many other younger Vancouver artists are. So I find it flattering, but I also find it you know a bit uh, um, unexpected. Um, but I understand the reasons for it, and I think that, that um, um, particular ideas about social landscape and that kind of thing absolutely are important to my work and absolutely are important to those other artists as well. Um, so, yeah. Oh, wait, was there a second part to your question? I can't remember. How, how I reacted to other... Well, no, I was just wondering how would... I don't know if you read the text before or... I, I hadn't read the text before, but I had a sense they both sort of gave me a sense of what the content of the, yeah. of the talks were going to be. Well, I mean, for us, we have to relate to the text and, and try to catch up and, and, and to, to build the construction of that, but I was just wondering how that is for you. I mean, but I mean, but I mean as an artist, it's really... It's, it's such a, 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 a treat to hear such considered, you know, thoughtful... Um, um, thoughts about my work, you know, it's just, it's, it's quite, it's quite important and amazing. <laughs> but more in a way, like, how do you find the uh, interpretation of Victoria about the nature, composition of nature? Somebody waiting for the question. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, this question is for uh, Fergal and uh, Victoria. Uh, because of the groups and people that Althea chooses to work with, there's um, a sense of um, politics around uh, uh, coercion and other kinds of themes related to the type of work that it is, but also in the collaborative uh, process itself, because in the end, the artist is still in charge in terms of, of what the work uh, looks like in the end and, and how it's portrayed. And I'm wondering if either of you could speak to um, this idea of coercion and, and kind of place it. Um, well, I think that coercion is something that um, of gentle direction <laughs> and um, I mean co coercion is not a word I would use at all <laughs> um, no I think there's a way in which she built you build the relationships and and they evolve on their own and um, as I said in the paper the artists the the collaborators evolve into artists contemporary artists in their own way and I think that's amazing I don't think I'd use the word coercion either. Um, I mean, one of the ideas I had was that 
and maybe in some respects the like the early Vancouver stuff is more coursed that everything in it is fixed often in the, there are often studio shots where everything is constructed within the image you know exactly how it's going to look at the very end of it um, and then when you get someone like Rodney Grimm um, there's a kind of an element of chance enters into it there's a kind of an element of he's performing his little bits of improvisation comes with it and then here I think there's a huge element of, of kind of chance um, that let run sort of with themselves in many respects and although there's a kind of a direction I think it's more like a, a setting of a stage and then they go and they perform with it um, what happens then is another matter I mean it's kind of my argument that what happens is that there is an in kind of it's we're at a moment when this kind of self-performance um, kind of gives itself away very naturally and it's, this is the moment of reality tv as well as being the moment of what good about his works so when you put people on a stage um, they almost naturally go into this kind of um, self-expression um, in a kind of a 60s tradition but that it automatically or can very easily look staged and constructed um, so I, I think it's actually almost the opposite of coercion in some ways. Um, but whether it's a setting, a, a setting the stage for something is another matter. Um, that might be a different question. And, and I think one of the things too is that Althea is very sensitive about that particular issue. I mean, and that's why, like for instance, when you talk about Jeff Wall, sometimes the word collaboration comes up, but you don't hear exactly who he was collaborating with. But I, I don't know, just the texts that, that I've read you. I often hear the names of the girls in the text, and I love that. Like, I love that we get a sense of who they are and what they're going to do. And this is not something I feel from other artists who are also working in a collaborative mode, apparently. Yeah, Phil Collins' video pieces, um, the, the, what you call the dance of sunset in Palestine, I don't think he gave the names to people. Right, exactly, just like that. It's more like just having to response to the question she had, but maybe I have to, I have, I mean, I pose another question. Um, I mean, there is certainly a moment that the girls coming out of constraint or like the given frame that given by you, and yeah, and then either of you found that moment, and then how you relate it to this theatrical awkward or sometimes even horrific or um, yeah, sense from the works. So um, is how the what got the you're, you're asking that um that the what got the the the, the moment the theatre is set up and then how that actually turns into a kind of theatricality. Yeah. Um, Does it happen naturally? I mean, I've I mean, especially when you consider the people you're um, you're advertising for. Very often, these are people who will perform anyway. Um, yeah, in, in, in the two projects that you considered, yes, that's um, the case. Yeah. And she, yeah. <laughs> um, that's what the social service one. Were they people that have been involved in making performance before? Or? Mostly no, and the ones you had had been like a couple of them had been in high school plays. I mean, I think that the contemporary art world, even if it isn't, thinks of itself as a discrete entity. And there's an, a sense in which those awkward moments in those videos break down that front. And they do it swiftly and um, effortlessly because they don't really even know they're doing it. Most of the works are 
shot in real time in a single take. So the, the editing is actually quite minimal. Like Songstress, if you've seen it, you'll know that it's, um, it's just shot all in a single take. And so everything that unfolds during the course of a, again, it was shot sort of in, in a structurally considered way on single rolls of film. So the performance had to unfold within you know, the duration of that roll of film, in which case it was a 16 millimeter, 100 foot roll of film. Um, and then A Memory Lasts Forever, which is the, um, the, the work about the drowning of the dog with the four girls. Um, that one was shot um, not in a single take on a roll of film, it was shot on video, but it was shot in, um, uh, in a way which is a kind of um, a standard um, way of documenting um, usually amateur theater, which is a sort of three camera mode, where you have three cameras that are stationary, um, trained on different parts of the performance but which never sort of, um, which never violate um, the edges of the frame of the stage. And so that's the way we shot A Memory Lasts Forever. It was only shot in real time. So there's no editing in terms of adding or removing time. There's editing in terms of choosing which camera to show at different times. And so, yeah, in some ways there were decisions that were made um, with regards to which camera to privilege, which view to privilege, but not to sort of, um, t to add or remove any particular action or something like that. Um, this, the Civil Deeds project, um, because it was shot in a very different way, um, there were a lot of editing decisions. And in this case, actually, the, a, a few of the young men who came um, to the opening here, um, it was, it, this is the first time that this work is shown, um, brought these up with me. They were like, well, why did you make that cut? And why did you, you know, choose to put that shot after that shot? And I, you know, I couldn't go back and like talk about all the footage we gained, you know, like which, which shots didn't turn out, which shots did, and that kind of thing. But they, a few of them did have some objections. <laughs> so, um, yeah. The, so in that case, there were, there were decisions that had to be made. And in that case, the sort of, um, um, the, the consideration was more to do with the, the considerations had to do with um, the quality of the shots, the quality of the lighting, narrative concerns, that kind of thing. So it's kind of my first, the first project that actually did have those kinds of decisions that were separated from the performative act itself. And did you make any decision about the order in which the performance occurred in Sanskrit? Yeah, I did. So that, that's, a, that's a good point then, yeah, I did make those decisions. And those are, you know, they're, they were considered decisions. And a certain feel about the, the sequence of Yeah, yeah. I wonder, yes, as you, uh, a temporary resident to this city, as a resident of our research and residence program, you're developing a new work here. I wonder whether you feel would this be a moment to share a couple of ideas about that work before we invite everyone for a drink upstairs? Um, well, I can tell you what um, what I hope to do, <laughs> and that is um, I won't say so specifically what I hope to do because then I don't want to jinx it. But I can tell you about the group that I want to work with and how I want to bring them together. And the group would be um, um, new mothers um, who have just had babies. I, uh, I, I hope to be able to, and again, this, this is a question that I think in some ways maybe relates to a couple of the ideas that were, that came out in, in the talks, but I, I'm hoping to, um, to find them through um, um, perhaps birth registries or some other way of gleaning um, official um, information about individuals here in Utrecht and find um, a number of babies that have been sequentially born and bring the babies of those mothers in, into um, um, a, an arena in which we would make a performance together. And it would be very simply, simple and sort of structurally oriented performance. And again, it would be a structure that I, that I sort of impose upon the project and ask them to, to, um, uh, to perform within. Um, but now it's very much in the question mark stages of whether or not we're going to be able to get to this information and how, and and then furthermore how we're going to be able to um, 
you know, convince a diverse, a very diverse group, perhaps you could even say a quasi cross section of the population of this city um, to actually, you know, want to participate in. I don't know if that made any sense or not. <laughs> Looking forward to that. I guess uh, you'd agree um, this would be the moment to thank our speakers. Thank you, Victoria. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Virgo. Thank you, Althea. Thank you, everyone uh, coming over, bringing all these um, interesting questions uh, to the table. I'd like to invite you two floors up for a drink, and we can just continue, uh, just in a different format, as they say. Thank you very much, uh, everybody, for a really impressive uh, and exciting evening. Thank you.